MOS soon shelling. Mr. Chairman, as we work towards our vision of confident Singaporeans, a competitive Singapore and a cohesive society, we remain committed to supporting students with differing, different needs to enable them to develop confidence in their future and the skills and resilience to do well in life. I thank Ms. Denise Poir and Mr. Sean Huang for highlighting the importance of supporting students with special educational needs, SEN. MOE has developed our landscape of support significantly. We will continue to enhance support for students with SEN throughout their educational journey. I agree with Mr. Jarrod Yam that some children with SEN need more intensive interventions. I will say more about the early intervention provided for preschoolers at MSF's COS. In our mainstream schools, all students with SEN, with or without a diagnosis, can get support. As part of our whole school approach, support is provided through inclusive classroom practices by all teachers, guided by teachers trained in special needs and allied educators in learning and behavioural support, AEDs, LBS. A small number of students may need individualised therapy delivered in clinical settings or they may need a customised curriculum in a spare school. For these students, schools work with MOE educational psychologists and parents to facilitate referrals. MOE is constantly innovating to develop evidence-based interventions for the skills development of students with SEN, school-based dyslexia remediation, circle of friends and facing your fears are examples. I would like to share more on another one, transit. Entering primary one can be a major transition point for our students. Some students may need additional support in developing social and behavioural skills to cope with this transition. Last year, I shared that MOE was implementing transit for P1 students with social and behavioural needs. With Transit, students receive support from allied educators in learning and behavioural support and teachers at P1 to learn and apply self-management skills to get ready to learn independently. Since the introduction of Transit, about 180 students have made encouraging progress in developing their self-management skills. I visited North Vista Primary recently and saw how students in transit had dedicated teaching resources to support them in their management of their socio-emotional needs, as well as in their abilities to interact with others. There are currently 66 schools implementing transit. Each can support up to 10 students in transit, and we are preparing to support this number in every primary school by 2026. Madam Rahayu Mazam, spoke about enhancing accessibility to SPAT schools. We had announced in 2019 that we are working with our SSAs to set up three new government-funded SPAT schools that can support students with autism spectrum disorder who can access the national curriculum but need to learn in a SPAT setting due to their moderate level of SEN. One of these schools is St Andrew's Mission School, SAMS, which began operating in January 2022 at Bukit Batuk. With SAMS, there are currently 22 SPAT schools distributed across Singapore to serve students with moderate to severe SEN. SAMS permanent site will be located next to Nanhua High School, and it will provide 500 primary and 350 post-primary level school places. As part of our continued efforts to plan ahead and improve SPAT school capacity, I am pleased to announce that MOE will be working with Cerebral Palsy Alliance Singapore to set up a second school in the West for students with multiple disabilities. These students have complex needs which can affect their learning and mobility and may also face medical challenges. 
Families can look forward to strong support for their child's holistic development with SPAD educators, allied professionals and parents working closely together. We wholeheartedly agree with Ms Denise Poir that our vision to develop the full potential of our students with SEN should be a shared vision, requiring close partnerships with key stakeholders. MOE works closely with schools, early intervention centres, the Department of Child Development and Hospitals, sister agencies and organisations such as ACTA and SG Enable, as well as, very importantly, our SSAs, to meet families' needs at different stages of their journey. We thank Ms Poir for her vision of the impact that SPED schools should have. We believe in the SPED schools and in our SSAs which run them. We are committed to resourcing them well, financially and through co-developing quality SPED curriculum and investing in SPED teaching. The development of the SPED sector is situated within the larger Enabling Master Plan 2030. MOE is committed to co-creating solutions in a range of areas beyond SPED, across the lifespan of the children and families that we serve. Both within and beyond special needs, MOE has been strengthening our partnerships with parents to equip our children so that they have the resourcefulness, resilience and confidence to meet challenges in the future. Ms. Pua and Ms. Kerry Tan have brought across the critical role of parents as what happens at home complements what happens in schools. We will support parents in the following ways. First, we will strengthen our partnerships with parents through the community and parents in support of schools, COMPASS. This is a different COMPASS from MOM's Complementarity Assessment Framework. MOE's COMPASS Council has embarked on efforts to support parents as we continue to encourage broader definitions of success. For example, COMPASS has organised a series of Facebook Live sessions to create awareness of different pathways of excellence. The first session was held with industry leaders to discuss the qualities that make for a future-ready individual and the need to broaden definitions of success for our children. The next two sessions will share perspectives from parents and individuals. Recognising the impact of social media and online behaviour on our children's mental well-being, the COMPASS team is also working to encourage a culture of cyber kindness in parents and children through creating a set of cyber kindness best practices. They are partnering the Singapore Kindness Movement to provide resources to raise parents' awareness and understanding of cyber wellness and kindness and how they can support their children in it. COMPASS has also started capability building sessions to equip parent support groups, PSGs, to support their parent community to build good relationships with their children and enhance their overall mental well-being. This is carried out through a series of Let Us Chat training workshops for PSG leaders, which was recently completed across 14 schools. Second, MOE is working closely with PSGs so that they can connect with and support fellow parent communities. I recently met with the 25 PSGs who are leading the charge in their own ways to support parents. Through understanding their parents' needs and being creative and resourceful in meeting those needs. One example is Presbyterian High School's PSG. By providing a listening ear and being a befriender, the PSG builds a strong circle of support for parents and provides different avenues for them to reach out and seek help, such as through level group chats and parent engagement sessions. Another example is Victoria Junior College's PSG. The PSG has been tapping on their student alumni to share their education and career journeys with their student and parent communities and provide tips on coping with stressors that students may face. Parents could hear from alumni about their aspirations and struggles, which help them to better support their children. Over the next two years, we will have more PSGs coming on board these efforts. The MOE has launched a mental well-being resource guide and an online repository of resources for PSGs. Developed based on suggestions and feedback from PSGs, the guide provides tips and resources that can inform PSGs' efforts to support parents. The online repository is a live document and we will work with PSGs to enhance its content over time to cover other issues. 
Lastly, we share useful resources and tips with parents via MOE's social media platforms and the Parents Gateway, which has a new feature called Parenting Resources to guide them in supporting their children's education journey. We are also working with partner agencies to incorporate more resources into the portal. Our partnerships with parents via Compass and PSGs extend MOE's efforts to build students' confidence and resilience beyond the school environment. We are also stepping up partnerships with other stakeholders in society. This is particularly pertinent in the area of mental well-being. Dr. Wan Rizal asked how students with mental well-being concerns can be provided with stronger, coordinated care and support. Second Minister Dr. Maliki had spoken about our strengthened support for students' mental well-being in schools through the refreshed character and citizenship education curriculum. We recognise that the issues that affect student mental well-being are multifaceted and stressors outside of school can have an impact. MOE is part of a whole of government effort to support youth mental well-being through the Interagency Task Force for Mental, Mental Health and Wellbeing, which is being led by Senior Minister of State for Health, Dr. Janil Putucheri. As part of this task force, MOE and MSF are working together to provide greater support for families, children and youths to enhance mental well-being. Parenting is one key area we are looking into. I had earlier described MOE's recent efforts through the PSGs to support fellow parents in taking care of their own children's mental well-being. Through this task force, we will engage and empower a wider segment of parents with evidence-based, bite-sized parenting strategies and mental health and well-being knowledge, so that parents can build stronger relationships at home and help their child effectively meet life's challenges. We will also explore effective ways to parent in the digital age. Another area that we are concerned about is the potential impact of the digital world on students' mental well-being. We are working with government agencies, social media and technology companies and SSAs to create awareness of positive ways to use digital technology. Harness technology platforms to promote a healthy online peer support culture and find practical solutions that mitigate online risk. MOE is also part of whole of society efforts like the Youth Mental Wellbeing Network, which was set up in February 2020 by MSF, MOH and MOE to co-create ground-up solutions to improve youth's mental wellbeing. SMS Janil and Minister of State Mr Elvin Tan will be announcing some updates on the network later. I have shared about our work with parents government agencies and the community to build an interconnected network of care, support and opportunities for our students. Dr Maliki had also spoken about our efforts as part of Uplift to build a strong network of community partners to support our disadvantaged students and their families. Minister Chan has shared about our partnerships with industry to provide more workplace learning opportunities for IHL students and with government agencies and companies to strengthen the employability and career prospects of our polytechnic and ITE graduates in the future economy. Together, these partnerships reflect our concerted whole of society effort to transform the education system and achieve our vision of a confident, competitive and cohesive Singapore. Mr Chairman Sir, in Chinese, please. 我们的学生面对的是一个科技日新月异因此新加坡需要具备以下三个要素 
在世界舞台上保持竞争力，并抓住各种机会。第三，社会团结，保持凝聚力。我们要认识到，教育不应仅仅局限在校园里，而是终身学习的旅程。我们要为学生在年少时奠定坚实的基石。激发他们的好奇心以及终身学习的热忱。在学校学校里，我们会协助学生发掘各自的优点，培养面向未来的能力，同时具备爱国意识。校外，我们提供了一个完善的生态体系，让他们投入延续教育和培训。我们将从每年给三万到四万名学生提供培训，扩展到每年为三十万。到四十万名员工重新装备，推动终身学习需要整个社会共同努力。教育工作者、家长、社会和业界伙伴都是重要的一份子，我们需要携手并进。让我们一起为加强新加坡的教育体系、建设一个充满自信、具有竞争力、团结一致的社会而共同努力。谢谢。